Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to tell you about what I do with these organic chickens when I get them. I often get a full chicken and they're about 20 bucks. Even if I do the research, they're about $19 or anywhere between $19 and $21 when I get them. So I'm just going to show you what I do with it because I know that that's a lot of money for a lot of people. But I like to be able to make the chicken last me for two meals. And so I just decided that I was going to make teriyaki chicken for the kids and for us. So I'm going to do teriyaki chicken and then I thought I would show you what I do with the carcass or what I do with the leftovers. I just want to show you basically how to utilize a whole chicken and make it go twice as far. It doesn't feel like it's rocket science to me, but I'm just assuming that it might help someone because sometimes you kind of look at a price of a chook and $20 would be far too much but if it's going for two meals for what I would consider to be four adults which is two adults and two teenagers that's $10 per dinner you know $2.50 for the protein for that meal for each person which I think is really economical so this is why I justify the $20 organic chicken because I'm using it for two meals. Now the way I do it, I'm not gonna show you because a lot of people don't like any kind of meat on a video and neither would I actually, it kind of grosses me out. So I cut out the chicken breast off the whole chicken and I cut out as much of that meat as I can and that's what I would use in the stir fry. And usually next, I would roast the rest of the carcass so that would give me the drumsticks and the wings and the rest of the body that I would use for protein and often I would use that in either a chicken fried rice or I would use it in a chicken soup so that's how I would make it go at least two ways so tonight I'm just going to show you well I might show you the first meal and then the second meal I'll show you tomorrow so the video will be in two parts so basically I turn it up so that the breast is facing me and then I cut through the skin you want to make sure you've got a really sharp knife and sometimes if I'm feeling kind of extra queasy or if I'm not up for it, I get James to do it or get someone to do it in the household. For a lot of people it's no big deal, but for me sometimes it definitely is. And I just cut out the top with the chicken breast. And like the meat, the recipe that I'm doing now calls for 600 grams. And I might not get 600 grams out of the chicken breast for these of this chicken. Because usually these organic ones that I get are size 16, but they're still not big enough to get enough meat off of them. Well, the way I cut them anyway, because I'm not a butcher, I'm just cutting it the best way I know how. And that's just, I cut it down the backbone or the chest bone, and then I cut out as much meat as I can. Usually I get about 400 grams, but I'm quite happy with that for a family of four. That's 100 grams per person, and I feel like that's quite enough protein. Often there's other proteins that I have in it, if we're having it with beans or cheese or something like that. So I'm not particularly worried on getting the exact 600 grams. Okay, so raw chicken alert. Close your eyes if you don't like it. I weighed it on the scale and it was actually 400 grams and I am chopped it up and sliced it into small bits. And I'm going to add the ingredients and it can sit and marinate for a while while I organise the vegetables. Quarter of a cup soy sauce. Feels like a lot, but I think you need it in order to actually have a sauce. Quarter of a cup. And then three tablespoons of brown sugar. Two, three. Three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar or rice wine vinegar and I'm going to guesstimate three tablespoons. Two tablespoons of mirin. Two. And it says to use sesame oil but I don't have any and I actually don't know how a half a teaspoon of sesame oil would even make much difference but apparently it does and I've got crushed garlic in here because I know I bought some. Two teaspoons of crushed garlic. But I always know you do not skimp on the garlic. So now I'm just gonna heat this pan, make sure it's oiled up. I've already cooked the rice. I'm gonna get it a little bit hot. So I'm gonna fry off the chicken and then I'm gonna add the sauces. It said that I should have added the garlic in the center of the chicken once I've fried it, but it's okay. And what I'm doing while this is cooking or while I'm putting all of this together, I'm actually heating the oven up because I'm gonna roast what's left of the chicken so that I can split the cold meat out of it tomorrow. Once again, a bit of a chicken alert. I'm gonna put the chicken in the roasting pan. I'm gonna cover it with some oil and I'm gonna use some garlic salt and I'm gonna roast it. Too much of what stuff? Kimchi? Yeah. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, I know, sorry, honey. 
So the chicken's been cooking for about five minutes. So I'm going to add the soy sauce mix now and leave it to cook a little longer. Usually the chicken breast meat cooks real quick and if you cook it for too long it gets quite dry. But it's going to continue cooking with the sauces so I'm just wanting that to all cook together so I'm going to put that in now. And I'm going to turn it down to low. Now with all that brown sugar it's all going to thicken. I'm just going to get this chicken roasting while this cooks for a little bit in the juices. But I don't want it to cook too long because it'll overcook. So you've got to make sure you oil it so that the skin goes crispy and the garlic salt sticks. Spread that over. It doesn't need as long as a normal roast chicken would because all the chicken breast is gone from it. So those thicker pieces of meat aren't there. Although it does need to get cooked to the bone for the drumsticks and for the wings and things. It basically doesn't need the length of time. But I do check it. I've got a thermometer and I make sure that it's at the correct temperature for chicken. So this is looking pretty good. It's nice and saucy. It just needs to be thickened a little bit. So I'm going to use a little bit of tapioca because I don't like using corn flour. And I found that tapioca does exactly the same thing. So I'll get that. I'm going to turn this off. Teaspoon of tapioca flour. So I'm going to turn it back on again, make sure it gets hot. And this is going to help the sauce stick to all the chicken. Right, so I'm going to turn it off and make sure it sits there waiting for me to have the vegetables ready. The other thing about the Bostock's chicken that I love is that they're recyclable, the plastic is. Not all the plastics are on the chickens. So the Bostock's chicken is organic. It's antibiotic free and it's SPECA verified. So chlorine free, GMO free, hormone free. And it's number two, so it can be recycled in most places. There's in here there's like a whole broccoli and I think three or four carrots, heaps of beans and about half a packet of edamame beans. Okay, so the family are hanging around like vultures. Not vultures, we are hungry. Hazel yeah. would like some. Anyway, it's only... You can see the... <laughs> how fat she is. It's only 8 o'clock. See? It's not 9 o'clock. Anyway, <laughs> vegetables, go for it guys. Yeah, here. Yeah. Can Bone I rice. spoon for the rice? Oh, yes. Because I'm going to make an old one. Yo, whose ball is what? Is this my ball over make here? Up, yeah, Mum, is this your ball? No, go for it bud. That one's fine. Could you ball. switch over? No. Are you really dead? Do we have something for this? Or? You know. I hate being on the side of the bench. You gotta do all the running around. There we go. There we go. Steamed veggies. Yeah. You're doing the camera. Where's your you? rice? Well, I put the rice on top. Oh, okay. You don't. Emma. Sick of to it off, Mum. Do you wanna, do you wanna um, dish yours up there? No, I'll have one of his left over. Just pass the other thing. This thing? Yeah, I'll use that. Okay. Is that raw chicken? No, there's no raw anything. It's on the back of here. No, that's cooked chicken. Try it and taste it and see. It's really good. So I actually just really use good. that to stir through the vegetables. So I've got the chicken cooked and I'm just going to leave it sitting out on the bench to cool down. Hey guys, it's the following night and I'm finishing off the second meal with the chicken, whole chicken that I had cooked yesterday. So what I've done is I have removed all the chicken that was on the carcass and in actual fact there would be at least maybe a cup and a half. And so I've got that to the side and it's cool and it's just sitting there. I've chopped up onion and some carrot and I've got some celery to go. And I'm making some chicken stock in the Instant Pot. So I've put all the bones in here with water and some apple cider vinegar and some pepper. And I'm going to use that to make vegetable soup. I've also got wontons. I have got two packets out because I don't know if one's enough. I can't quite see how many are in there. So it's all a bit of trial and error at the minute. So that's what I'm doing with this part of the, the chicken. So that makes us two meals. And I find it really satisfying knowing that I've used up the whole chicken. In fact, these bones, once I've made the stock, 
But what I do is I go ahead after that and I keep going with the bones and I put them on for a really decent time in a pot for maybe 8 to 12 hours, even kind of go into the next day if I need to. I turn it off at night and then I start again the next day and I go really hard and get the rest out of the bones and I will use that for broth. And I use the broth mostly for adding to anything, anything fluid. I would cook rice in it or I'll use it as a bit of stock for making spaghetti bolognese. Any kind of thing that needs the hot chicken flavour the juices I use the broth in that and then it's not kind of sitting there wondering what I'm going to do with it or if I'm going to make another soup so technically I get kind of three meals out of this but realistically I get two plus benefits okay so for the soup I've got some garlic onion and carrot and I'm just cooking that off in some oil and the chicken there was at least two cups I shredded it all up I'm quite happy with the amount that's in there. Finely diced and sliced two stalks of celery. Add some Worcestershire sauce. Okay, so add some Worcestershire sauce and salt and pepper. Give it another stir. Okay, so these are the dumplings and they're really tiny. Just like little things. I'm going to put them both in and I'm going to see how it feels once we're all finished eating our dinner. So I'm just going to put the lid on this and I'm going to let it boil for 10 minutes. I have most definitely overcooked it with two packets of dumplings but that's okay. Using two packets of dumplings makes the cost of the meal higher and so the one packet would have been enough. They're about four dollars each. The other thing you could use instead of putting dumplings in there is maybe some toasted bread or some garlic bread. That would also be delicious. Sourdough bread, yum, you could do heaps with soup. I reckon next time I'll just do one packet of dumplings and crusty bread. Yeah. That'd be better. Wait, so is this the soup or is that the soup? Because that was looking at the crock pot. Oh, that crock pot over there is cooking broth. Oh, so that's separate. So this yeah. is, this is, okay, sweet. I'm happy. Yeah. I thought we were waiting for two things to cook and I was like, darn. No, not at all. Okay, I'm happy. There you go, Riggs. Thank you. Man.